This is the Music History Today podcast for September 14th. On today's show, Handel completes the Messiah, Clear Channel puts some artists on the naughty list, and the first MTV Video Music Awards take place. First up, though, on this date in 1955, Little Richard recorded the classic song Tutti Frutti. In 1964, Bing Crosby's television comedy show, The Bing Crosby Show, premiered on ABC television. In 1967, the Rolling Stones ended their contract with their manager, Andrew Lug Oldman, and became their own managers. In 1968, the TV cartoon show The Archies, about a fictional band, premiered on television. In 1968, same day, Roy Orbison lost two of his three sons in a house fire in Tennessee while he was on tour in England. In 1969, Genesis played in public for the first time. In 1970, Stevie Wonder married singer-songwriter Rita Wright. In 1974, Quincy Jones married actress Peggy Lipton. In 1976, Bob Dylan's TV special called Hard Rain after the title of his album that was released the day before aired. In 1979, The Who's movie Quadrophenia premiered at the Toronto Film Festival. In 1987, American Bandstand became the longest-running TV music show at that time. It premiered in 1952. In 1995, the handwritten lyrics by Paul McCartney for the Beatles song Getting Better were auctioned off for $249,000. In 1998, MTV's music video talk show Total Request Live premiered. In 2001, radio station broadcasting company Clear Channel put out a list of songs that they highly suggested that their radio stations not play in response to the events of September 11, 2001. And by highly suggested, they mean play them at your own job's risk. The list included Billy Joel's Is Only the Good Die Young, both the Bob Dylan and Guns N' Roses versions of Knockin' on Heaven's Door, and every single song from Rage Against the Machine. Not that they were playing favorites with anybody, apparently. In 2002, Gwen Stefani married Gavin Rossdale from Bush. In 2013, John Legend married model Chrissy Teigen. In 2017, Selena Gomez announced that she had a liver transplant. Also in 2017, Fergie announced that she and actor Josh Dumel were separating. They eventually got divorced. In 2018, the Guinness Book of World Records announced that Tony Bennett became the artist who had the longest time between releasing the original version of a song and a remake version. The amount of time was 68 years. The song was the song Fascinating Rhythm that he recorded actually under the name Joe Barry way back in 1950 and then again with singer Diana Krall in 2018. In 2022, R. Kelly was convicted in Chicago, Illinois on sex crimes charges. He is now spending what I am assuming to be an eternity in prison. In classical music in 1741, George Frederick Handel finished work on his Messiah composition. In 1954, Benjamin Britten premiered his opera, Turn of the Screw. And in 1960, Dmitry Shostakovich officially became a member of the Soviet Communist Party. And in 68, 1968 that is, Dmitry Shostakovich premiered his 12th string quartet. In award ceremonies that were held on September 14th in 1984, the very first MTV Video Music Award ceremony took place. The Cars won Video of the Year for the video for the song, you might think, but people mainly remember the show for Madonna singing Like a Virgin while in a wedding dress with her boy toy belt on. Her performance created a lot of controversy in conservative America, And it would be the first of many things that Madonna would do to push a lot of people's buttons, albeit accidentally, as you will hear if you listen to the Music History In-Depth podcast, which already dropped on this very channel, where we go more in-depth about that performance, about the MTV Video Music Awards in general, 
and also the tragic events of September 11th and their effect on the music industry of which Clear Channel's list was part of. Like I said, you can check out that podcast on this very channel. Please like, subscribe, and do all that algorithm stuff. In 1994, The Temptations received their star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 2014, Camden Town, London, England, unveiled a statue of Amy Winehouse, who lived in the neighborhood. It's in Camden Market, if you live or visit London. Although, that place is usually pretty crowded as it is, so good luck visiting some days. Albums that were released on September 14th in the UK include in 1992 when Jethro Tull released The Little Light Music and in 1996 Deus released In a Bar Under the Sea. Meanwhile, in America, in 1964, Doris Day released the Doris Day Christmas album. In 1970, The Birds released Untitled. In 1975, Supertramp released Crisis. What crisis? In 1979, Jethro Tull released Stormwatch. In 1981, Genesis released Abacab. In 1987, Faith No More released Introduce Yourself and Mick Jagger released Primitive Cool. In 1990, Meat Beat Manifesto released Armed Audio Warfare. In 1992, Blind Melon released their self-titled album. In 1993, Counting Crows released their classic August and Everything After. Also in 1993, Teddy Pendergrass released The Little More Magic. Squeeze released Some Fantastic Place. And Ringo Starr released Ringo Starr and his All-Star Band Volume 2 Live from Montreux. Also in 1993, Brian Adams released his live album, Earth, Wind & Fire released Millennium, and Prince released the hits and the B-sides. In 1999, Iggy Pop released Avenue B, Luis Miguel released Amarte es un placer, and the Doobie Brothers released Long Train Run in 1970-2000. to In 2003, Jet released Get Born. In 2004, Alice Cooper released Schools Out and Other Hits. Government Mule released Deja Voodoo. Megadeth released The System Has Failed. Arcade Fire released Funeral. Tears for Fears released Everybody Loves a Happy Ending. Blondie released Live by Request. Joni Mitchell released Dreamland. And Frank Zappa released Quadiophiliac. In 2008, Mark Knopfler released Get Lucky. In 2009, David Gray released Draw the Line. In 2010, Weezer released Hurley. And Leonard Cohen released Songs from the Road. In 2012, Marilyn Martin released Trust, Love, Pray. And in 2018, Carrie Underwood released Cry Pretty. Singles that were released in the UK on September 14th include in 1962 when Chris Montez released Let's Dance. In 1973, Electric Light Orchestra, or ELO, released Showdown, and Bob Dylan released Knockin' on Heaven's Door, the original. In 1979, XTC released Making Plans for Nigel. In 1987, Pink Floyd released Learning to Fly. In 1992, Crowded House released It's Only Natural, and in 1996, The Cardigans released Love Fool. Meanwhile in America, in 1965, Marvin Gaye released Ain't That Peculiar. In 1970, Quicksilver Messenger Service released Fresh Air. In 1971, Martha Reeves and the Vandellas released Bless You. In 1979, Pat Benatar released If You Think You Know How to Love Me. Also in 1979, Blondie released Dreaming. In 1987, Yes released Love Will Find a Way. In 1992, Peter Gabriel released Digging in the Dirt. In 1998, Mel B released I Want You Back. In 2009, Carrie Underwood released Cowboy Casanova. In 2010, Foster the People released Pumped Up Kicks. And in 2018, Gucci Mane released Wake Up in the Sky, and in 2018, same day, Jojo Siwa released Only Getting Better. 
Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on September 14th include the legendary Miss Amy Winehouse, also rapper Nas, singer Subin of Cosmic Girls, rapper Han Ji Sung of Stray Kids, rapper JT Money, singer Thaze, singer Melissa McGee, rapper Zyko of Block B, singer Ashley Roberts of the Pussycat Dolls, singer Benjamin Ingrosso, singer Nick Tangora, Barry Cowsill of the Cowsills, Craig Montoya of Everclear, Jeff Loomis of Nevermore, Steve Gaines and Ed King, both of Leonard Skinner, and both were actually born in the exact same year, 1949. Paul Kosoff of Free, Pete Agnew of Nazareth, John Bowser Bauman of Shanana, Fred Sonic Smith of MC5, singer Joey Heatherton, composer Caucho Lopez, producer May Axton, Morton Harkett of AHA, Mike Cooley of the Drive By Truckers, singer Logan Henderson, composer Michael Hayden, John Power of the Laws. Paolo Gregoletto of Trivium, Steve Berlin of The Blasters, and also the group Los Lobos, singer-songwriter Beth Nielsen Chapman, country music singer John Barry, bassist Steve Watts, saxophonist Dennis Batiste, guitarist Mark Weber of the group Pulp, country music singer Danielle Peck, composer and drummer Alberto Naranjo, Guitarist Alex St. Clair of Captain Beefheart rounds out the troops. Artists who unfortunately passed away on September 14th include organist Johann Mueller, who passed away in 1743 at the age of 59. The organist who was also the son of composer Johann Pachelbel, Charles Pachelbel, passed away in 1750 at the age of 60. Composer Johann Sack passed away in 1763 at the age of 40. Composer Vincenzo Lavigna passed away in 1836 at the age of 60. Composer Oliver Holden passed away in 1844 at the age of 78. Composer Fortunato Santini passed away in 1861 at the age of 83. Composer Hubert Reese passed away in 1886 at the age of 84. Organist and choral director Reinhold Finsterbusch passed away in 1902 at the age of 76. Composer Gene Crass passed away in 1932 at the age of 53. The conductor of the Detroit Symphony from 1918 to 1936, Osip Gabrilovich, passed away from cancer in 1936 at the age of 58. Country music singer Vernon Dahlhart passed away in 1948 at the age of 65. Conductor Fritz Busch passed away in 1951 at the age of 61. Composer Marcel Deloney passed away in 1962 at the age of 64. Composer Mary Howe passed away in 1964 at the age of 82. Conductor Walter Herbert passed away in 1975 at the age of 73. Blues pioneer Furry Lewis passed away in 1981 at the age of 88. Violinist Christian Ferras passed away in 1982 at the age of 49. Composer Pablo Garrido passed away in 1982 at the age of 77. Band leader Perez Prado passed away in 1989 at the age of 71. Composer Peter Tranchel passed away in 1993 at the age of 71. Jazz singer Johnny Adams passed away from cancer in 1998 at the age of 66. Saxophonist Paul Williams passed away in 2002 at the age of 87. Musician John Sari Sr. passed away in 2003 at the age of 88. Singer and actor Patrick Swayze passed away from pancreatic cancer in 2009 at the age of 57. Drummer Bobby Graham passed away in 2009 at the age of 69. 
Singer Nat Sun was murdered in 2013 at the age of 32, and bassist Max Bennett of the group LA Express passed away in 2018 at the age of 90. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is September 15th, when in 2018, Taylor Swift released Love Story. Love Story. 